This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. And welcome to episode 9 of the Animani Cast. Lama, 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 a question answer, please. When we hear the answer, we promise that we'll leave. Hey! Hello, everybody, and welcome again to the Animini Cast. We are a podcast dedicated to the classic television animated series, The Animaniacs. We're going to talk about every joke, every gag, every cultural or political or historical reference we can think of, and in the process, probably go off on a bunch of tangents. But that's okay because there's a lot of stuff to talk about. We dig it. (laughs) And I am Joey. Joining me once again is my brother Nathan. Uh, yeah, that's pronounced right. Okay, and uh, and across the country is Kelly. Hello. Hey, Kelly. Hi. Uh, we are going to be talking about episode nine today, ladies and gentlemen, which originally aired on September twenty third, nineteen ninety three, and. This is, uh, I, I know, has another segment that is particular, particularly uh, fun to talk about for Kelly. I know particularly she talks about Wally Lama today. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> and uh, another uh, uh, Pinky in the Brain segment, which I had not really thought about for a while. I, I mm-hmm. kind of forgot about this yeah, segment. Yeah, I don't remember it. Um, before we get into the specific things, uh, just any general thoughts or feelings about this uh, particular episode? I'm happy I love to, this episode. Yeah, I'm happy to see Pinky in the Brain back and Wally Lama. So All right. I remember him as a kid. Today's theme song had a, a different variant, actually. Oh, good. It it uh, was Shirley MacLaine. Shirley MacLaine. And uh, Shirley MacLaine, of course, is an actress who doesn't really she's not really in the public eye as much as she was well even in the 90s she wasn't in the public eye too much i think she was definitely in more gags uh she was she would be somebody that would be made fun of say on the tonight show or you know things like that from from time to time when uh, people wanted to talk about oh crazy shirley mcclain with her reincarnation uh ideas and everything like that um but shirley mcclain today I don't think she's really had uh, the, the last movie I saw Shirley MacLaine in was, I think Bernie, with Jack Black. Are either one of you familiar with that movie I at all? I saw that one. Yes, no. it's it's on Netflix. It's, I enjoyed it. It's it's. I don't want to spoil too much, but basically, it's about Jack Black and uh, as a as a a man who uh, has this kind of. Very close friendship, I'd say, with Shirley MacLaine's character hmm. until she eventually drives him crazy and something horrible happens. Yeah, it's it's a fun movie because they take real people, too. Yes. And actors and mix them together. And, right. Yeah, it's yeah. based on a true story. Mm-hmm. So they actually took people from the town that it happened in. Yeah, and, so uh, you don't know. They'll be interviewing him. And you don't know if it's an actor or a real person. Right. So it's kind of kind of a fictional slash documentary yeah, film it's, it's 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 good it was a it was a fun watch so anyway that's the last shirley mclean movie i saw and it was fun but let's go ahead and get into the specifics right now first of all wally llama uh was written by paul rugg and directed by kirk Tingblad, which is such a weird, Sounds awesome made name. Up. <laughs> I don't know. It might be Tingblad, but uh, <laughs> Kelly, what could you tell us about this particular segment? It's one of my all-time favorites. I always have loved Wally Lama, and um, I even used to make my mother watch it and be like, "Mom, you have to watch this Wally Lama segment. It's so <laughs> funny," and she would laugh. Um, I used, I would make her watch this one and Woodstock Slappy and some of the others but i um the basically the the synopsis is the warners show up they climb up the himalayas they want to ask the wise all-knowing wally lama a question and he had just been talking to shirley mclean so 
the little intro, the Shirley MacLaine was relevant. Yes. Or uh, fit in with the, the episode. And he thought her question was really dumb because she wanted to know if she was, oh, I can't remember the name, Kay, Kay Ballard in yeah. a past life. So you see, Miss McLean, there is no way you could have been Kay Ballard in another life. She is a winter and you are definitely an autumn. And he's like, what a stupid question. I'm going to go watch Baywatch now. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't want to answer the Warner's questions. And they said, oh, it's an important question. Please, please. And he's like, nope, nope, go away. And they're like, oh, he's our new best friend. <laughs> and so the episode kind of follows um, all their usual chaos as they totally annoy him. And he's hiding from the little puppy children. And <laughs> he, he's floating in the air going, llama, 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 llama. And... I swear I quote this episode all the time. I just, I love to try to Im, um, imitate his voice and, you know, I'll go llama, 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 llama. And... <laughs> People are like, what are you doing? But um, it's funny. So I'll tell them, go watch Wally Lama. It's, it's just, it's a fun, fun episode. And um, I think it's, it's Warner's at, their most annoying best <laughs> yes they're 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 annoying but they're still cute at the same yeah. time which yeah. is a hard balance to do i think um yeah i might i love it when he he crashes into the ground and then tries to stop himself he thinks if you just say it really <laughs> i can meditate really quickly so funny <laughs> Mama. And he said he calls them puppy children. He's like they have faces like a spooky clown. <laughs> yes, and little eyes. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's so zinned out too, which is great. What are you doing? Hiding from the puppy children. Puppy children. Oh golly, yes. They have long ears like that, and beady black eyes like that, and white faces like a spooky clown. Yes, uh, and of course he was voiced by uh, Richard Libertini, who actually just uh, passed away a uh, little uh, while ago. Actually, I think in uh, uh, I believe January of this year. Hmm. And uh, when he passed away, I know that a lot of people were commenting uh, like, "Oh, the voice of Wally Lama passed away." <laughs> so this was like a big. It, it really did have a an effect on people in a in a positive way, which is always nice to see when that it happens. I was telling my assistant about this episode earlier and, and pulled up some things. And I sometimes I go to the website FARC, F-A-R-K dot com. Mm -hmm. And anytime there's a, a, com, a, a reference to a llama in one of the headlines, I'll go to see if there's a, any kind of Wally Llama reference. And I, I just Googled Wally Llama and FARC and I found one. <laughs> and I pointed to her. I was like, see, this is what I'm talking about. There's other people out there like me <laughs> who see the word llama and think, I mean, I know some people think Emperor's New Groove. Yes, but I think Wally Lama. Yes, I think my 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 wife is definitely an Emperor's New Groove. She she does do the the look. She quotes that more often. But uh, mm -hmm. by the way, she wanted me to say, "Save the llama drama for your llama mama." <laughs> I don't know why she. Okay, I, I, she asked me to work that into our podcast. Well, very naturally. Uh, I, I so that <laughs> I I don't know how to say that Seamless. naturally. It was seamless. We'll do it. We'll fix it in editing. It'll, it'll be great. Uh, okay. I don't think so. so anyway, <laughs> by the way, Richard Libertini, uh, just uh, so everyone knows, was also the voice of uh, Dijon from I think that's how you pronounce it from Ducktales, the Ducktales movie, and I think he was all in a couple Ducktales episodes as well. He was kind of the little thief guy. Oh yeah, from, from yeah, he kind of did a similar movie. a similar voice for that character. Uh, but of course, I am most familiar with him uh, in live action from a couple movies. He was, uh, had a small role in the Robin Williams Popeye movie. Uh, and probably his biggest role for me was in All of Me when he played a character named Praka Lhasa, who was kind of the, 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 I don't know what country he's supposed to be from. <laughs> the foreign man, I'll just say. So he played a character that tried to get uh, Lily Tomlin's spirit from her dying body to this young woman and then accidentally got it into Steve Martin. And then at one point they're having this this funny bit of trying to get the spirit uh, back into a bowl and stuff like that. And he does a, a funny voice kind of thing. So, Can you put Edwina 
back in the bowl. Back in bowl. Yes, back in bowl. He's back in bowl. Mean. Mean. What do you mean? Oh, you have to fix the ball. Fix ball. Fix ball. Fix ball. Fix ball. Fix ball. You put Edwina back in ball. Back in ball. Edwina back, back in ball. Go fix ball. Go fix ball. Go. 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 Richard Libertini, funny guy. He will be missed. But we have a great episode here with him. And let's go ahead and talk about some of the parts that we really liked. I mean, we have the question at the end right there, which was... Why do hot dogs come in packages of 10 and hot dog buns come in packages of 8? Which is is kind of a good question. Well, I think I know the answer. What's the answer? So that you'll buy more packages of everything. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think I, it's a... I, they answered it in Parenthood, I think, too. It was that's what I thought it was too. I thought it was Parenthood. Like I was watching this. Oh and the, yeah, it was Father of the Bride. It, it was Father of the Bride. I had to again another Steve Martin movie. I don't know what's going on. We a couple episodes ago we were yeah, talking about the jerk, ago, the jerk, and now we're talking about Father of the Bride and all of me and yeah. So it, it's all connected somehow to Steve Martin. This is like a weird thing of like of, they uh, might have just Kevin been Bacon fans of. Things. Steve Martin, maybe sure. Of all the writers, because these are not; these are clearly we're not making these things. <laughs> no, up. no, these are not forced connections at no, all. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. What are you doing? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I want to buy eight hot dogs and eight hot dog buns to go with them. But no one sells eight hot dog buns. They only sell twelve hot dog buns. So I end up paying for four buns I don't need. So I am removing the superfluous buns. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, but you're gonna have to pay for all twelve buns. They're not marked individually. Yeah. You wanna know why? Because some big shot over at the Wiener Company got together with some big shot over at the Bun Company and decided to rip off the American public. Because they think the American public is a bunch of trusting nitwits who'll pay for things they don't need rather than make a stink. Well, they're not ripping off this nitwit anymore because I'm not paying for one more thing I don't need. George Banks is saying no. Who's George Banks? Me! Yeah, I think they do make buns and hot dogs in the same size packages now. At least you can buy them in that size. Yeah, it's not as much of a discrepancy. But yes, it is something that still is. It Mm -hmm. it just depends on where you go. Yes. So that does drive Wally Llama crazy at the end. Um, I don't know. What are some things that you like, Kelly, about this episode? I mean, you you particularly like We already mentioned a couple things you like about it. Anything else? Um, Yeah, I like that uh, Dot tries to use her cuteness on him and it actually doesn't work a lot of times it does but it didn't work this time (laughs) and um well and i like the fact that he couldn't answer the questions and basically they broke wally lama yeah he he, and he went crazy yeah he had a big mental breakdown and in fact he even grabbed the film of the of the squeezed it he just went totally insane uh this this episode again was you know i think really my favorite writer so far revisiting these episodes has got to be Paul Rugg, who also wrote this episode. And he is just a fabulous writer. And he, you know, like I've said many times before, the voice of Freakazoid. And another Freakazoid connection to this is Joe, I believe it's pronounced Joe Leahy. Uh, Joe is the announcer in the Freakazoid cartoon. So this cartoon opens up with talking about Mount Gazuntite. And and going up the mountain and everything, uh, and yes, he he was the narrator in, I believe, just about every Freakazoid yeah. episode. Uh, he has a very uh, cool voice. Uh, I also liked there were a, f- a few other uh, pop cultural references in here that might kind of go past some younger folks today. Uh, <laughs> they're talking about climbing up the mountain is worse than sweating to the oldies. Hey there, it's me, Richard. Listen, are you sick and tired of boring look-alike exercise videos with synthesized elevator music and a lineup of leotard clad Stepford wives? Well, if you are, honey, have I got the cure for you. This is my brand new aerobic workout tape, Sweatin' to the Oldies. And if you don't like having fun, <laughs> well, you best not come in here. See, that went over my head. Too, it, really? So you never remember, you don't remember no. sweating to the oldies at all? Well, I don't even know okay. what you're saying. Okay. Oh wow. <laughs> See, this is why I can't I can't, you know, 
put some of these for granted, you know? Uh, and Wacko, <laughs> I thought he was eating snow at first, but no, he's just eating rocks for some reason. As they, ah. as they go up the mountain, he eats at least two rocks. And, uh, then Wacko has this moment where he has, we have a very, 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 <laughs> but we have a very, 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 very important question to ask you. He gets stuck like a record player. <laughs> Until Yakko hits him. Uh, yes. Yeah. He gets to get him unstuck. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Shirley MacLaine, you know how, you, Kelly, you were mentioning how um, the Dalai Lama, uh, Wally Lama, I should say, which, hey, I just slipped, so we might as well say that Wally Lama is, in fact, kind of a parody of the Dalai Lama. I don't, I don't uh, know. <laughs> so he says, you're not a reincarnation of Kay Ballard. And I was like, oh, who's Kay Ballard? Because that must be someone who died a while ago. From what I can tell, Kay Ballard is number one. She's she's a singer, mm-hmm. and number two, she's still alive. Weird. So it's definitely not true that Shirley MacLaine would be a reincarnation of Kay Ballard because Kay Ballard is definitely still alive. That does, yeah, that unless there was sense. another Kay Ballard that died a hundred years ago. Well, that there, I I'm find. sure there is a Kay Ballard. There had to be. Yeah, maybe she started Kay's Jewelry or something. I don't know. It's a fact now. It's on the podcast. <laughs> it's a fact. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Pinky and the Brain. I always like these kinds of things where they put Pinky and the Brain in this segment as kind of a teaser for the upcoming yeah. one. It's like, oh, I know what's coming up later. Yes. They take, and they take turns. Um, just a lot of cute stuff in this, and they're running through. I actually saw a, a map, or not even a map, but a real, like, dissection of Wally Lama's... Uh, <laughs> temple really uh, online they're talking about the different doors and how they connect in some way i think this guy's thinking way too much about how it's, it's a cartoon it's a cartoon man. but they're talking about there's four doors to this area that he goes into and they enter this room and exit that room so if, if you really want to obsess about that there is somebody who has broken it down and talks about the his 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 house. So there you go. Well, it just shows how devoted people are to the episode. I guess, <laughs> there you so. go. Well, it is it's... a fantastic segment. Yeah, and, I like uh... I like how he won't even answer questions to like where where do you want to go, sir, or why can't you answer? Que-? That's a question, and I'm not going to answer. <laughs> like Wally Lama has his priorities straight. Yeah, his priority right now is to watch westerns and not answer any questions. Yes, and of course, it's one of his favorite TV shows. They watch. Yes. <laughs> He's got to get that done, which we all, I think we all have to learn something from Wally Lama. He said, sometimes you just got to take a break. Yeah, take some time for yourself or you'll go crazy. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so any other additional thoughts on that segment before we move on to our second one? No, I guess not. I have nothing. All right. <laughs> This is Maurice LaMarche, the voice of the brain, and you are listening to the Animaniacast. So let's move on to segment number two, which is Where Rodents Dare, which was written by Peter Hastings and Tom Ruger and directed by Greg Reyna and Dave Marshall. Nathan, what are we going to say about this one? So this is the second Pinky in the Brain episode, or segment, I should say. Um, this one, the brain is trying to take over the world. Whoa. What? Uh, all right. <laughs> so his plan is to go to Switzerland, where there's the United Nations. There's a convention being held, and he's going to freeze all the world leaders for 24 hours so that he can basically take over the world. But... He has lots of trouble getting to the United Nations. And then when he finally gets there, he ends up freezing himself. Yes. <laughs> but he was very close. And this yeah. time, it wasn't even the Pinky's fault. It was yeah. just a waitress or something who put the cover down. He almost did it this time. Yeah. I, Probably, maybe. Yeah, that's hard to say. But he who controls the room controls the world was the idea. I don't know how he was going to... I guess yeah. he was going to hold them hostage and somehow in 24 hours... You know, the important thing is he got the first part down. He knew he had to get into yes. that room. Getting into the room was important. <laughs> and freezing everyone, you know, and then... So there are lots of uh, different references in this uh, particular one. And usually they're 
you know, we talk about pop cultural references in this one, but this time there were political references, yes. which was pretty darn cool to me. Um, before we move forward, I think we got to point out that this is the first time where Pinky and the Brain, it shows them like kind of the longer intro and mm-hmm. my favorite part, which is the brain writing on the board. Uh, and he writes, uh, BH91210. And what well, should, probably should have been 90210, but, uh, of course, that's kind of a reference to Beverly Hills 90210, which is a very popular uh, teen soap opera drama thing at the time. Um, Kelly, did you ever watch Beverly Hills 90210? I did for for a short time. I, yeah. I had older cousins and yeah. ended up watching it. Probably, I probably wasn't even allowed to watch it at that age. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I ended up watching it and kind of got into it for a while and uh lost interest yeah. after about a season or two. <laughs> I yeah, I had I had a couple friends that were really into it. I I hey, I my my wife knew about it. I don't know about it, but I do know about the second thing that uh, the brain was writing up there which was THX equals 1138 Ooh. which is of course George Lucas's directorial debut. Ooh. It was his student film and then he actually made it into an actual film. Uh, later and um which i i haven't seen the the special i guess you it it is a special edition that did come (laughs) out (laughs) recently yeah uh which i have not seen yet um but i i i like thx um when i did eventually see it in the 90s i believe when i you know getting into star wars and stuff and i wanted to know everything i could about george lucas and found out about this film and it's a dystopian for all of you folks out there who like the dystopian kind of movies of Divergent and Hunger Games and stuff like that, well, then you should watch this one. Uh, although the pacing is much slower mm-hmm. than films uh, today, it is definitely um, it's definitely an interesting movie, at least for me it was. The look of the peacekeepers in Hunger Games even kind of reminds me a little bit of... Um, uh, I don't remember what they're called in THX, but you know, those kind of yeah. white suited. They look um, like silver faced robe. Well, they are yeah. robots. They are yeah, robots. Okay. Right? Yeah. But they, yeah, they're robot troop guys who, to me, I was like, Ooh, stormtroopers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then that, it, 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 but you can kind of see where the hunger games pulled. I think, um, the yeah. pr- producers pulled some inspiration from, from, you know, a little bit, maybe a star Wars and, and even THX. Yes. If you're a star Wars fan, it's definitely a movie you got to check out. Uh, if, if nothing else than to see, uh, the first use of the word Wookiee is in that film. So there you go. Wow. There you go. Somebody says, I think I, hit, I think I hit a Wookiee at one point, which is just a, it's a long story, but there you go. THX 1138, check it out. And THX, and then 1138, of course, is a reference that you'll see in almost every uh, Star Wars film. And uh, it's even in American Graffiti. Mm. So there you go. There's also a quick uh, reference. I love the part where the brain, they say, we froze the janitor. Mm-hmm. Okay, good night. <laughs> <laughs> And there goes no so pinky. That was the main goal. <laughs> that was the main goal. To take freeze. over the world. No, was... We're gonna freeze the janitor tonight. Okay, good night. <laughs> no, the he goes. Okay, we froze. He goes. No, there's more. He goes. Well, there's also the Ginsu knives, <laughs> which Ginsu knives aren't really sold that much anymore. Of course, that's a reference to a, a, a tele, you know, a commercial. Yeah, and that's not all. And that's not all. Uh, but there's a Brady Bunch news graphic. Now, this is where they're flashing pictures of world leaders. That, um, in many cases are no longer, in fact, well, yeah, and they say I'm, in the news and former leaders, which I'm like, oh, that's uh, smart. So. It's smart because <laughs> it's just easier to just make, uh, uh, caricatures of former leaders yeah. as well. And then that way, when it's in reruns and syndications, it'll well, I'm glad, always be former leaders. Yes. So. so the way that, so going, uh, I'm not exactly sure if this is in, I think this is in order from the top left hand corner. So we have Fidel Castro, a leader of Cuba, Queen Elizabeth, George Bush Sr., H.W. Bush, I believe, uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, Man- now, this is some people who are confused about. It's Manuel Noriega in the center who looks like a pineapple. Uh, the reason he looks like a pineapple is actually people used to call him pineapple face or pineapple head um, because he kind of he didn't have the best complexion in the world. Ah. He's not the best looking guy. Oh, I believe he was the, the leader of uh, 
Yeah, Manuel Noriega was the dictator of Panama, and there was a, a whole invasion that happened during uh, George H.W. Bush's thing. It was a very short armed conflict. So, yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned former leaders right there, Nathan, yeah. because at this point, Manuel Noriega was actually in prison, I believe. So I don't understand why Manuel Noriega would be allowed I to come to this. Yasser Elif, Yasser Elif, Yasser Arafat from the uh, PLO, the Palestine, Palestinian Liberation Organization, uh, who has since passed away, was there. Boris Yeltsin, the, the who was the president of Russia at the at the time, was there. He is also deceased. Mikhail Gorbachev was on that list, and he's still alive. Big red dot. Big red birthmark on his forehead, yeah. right there. Uh, but yes, it does just look like a big dot. And then uh, Dan Quayle just looked like it was in the bottom right hand corner, just looking like a Smiling guy. He was just, <laughs> he was the vice president of, uh, George H.W. Bush. Uh, and of course, uh, Bill Clinton, President Bill Clinton later, uh, makes an appearance talking to Boris Yeltsin, uh, about how much he likes his coat. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we have a bunch of different leaders. Uh, Mikhail Gorbachev for some reason. I mean, he was the dispo, the deposed, uh, leader of the Soviet Union. Uh, so he was not allowed apparently to go inside this conference, yeah, even though he's on the news, but then later he's just outside. <laughs> they like... changed their, <laughs> they changed their mind at the last minute and they said, Mikhail, oh. you have to stay outside with this Soviet bear. And he was trying to sell secrets for food because they wouldn't even Sad, feed him. I know. He went all the way to Switzerland and they wouldn't let him in. <laughs> the and, and then there's one person inside the, inside that dinner who, I couldn't figure out who it is, and I can't find anybody online who could necessarily figure out who it is. The Warners, the 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 Warners are in there. The Warner siblings are eating at the dinner table. Yeah, they snuck in. Reason. Oh, okay. They I snuck like, in. Are they world leaders? They get in there because they they just do. Yeah. <laughs> and and they're talking to this woman with huge teeth, uh, and a, a red dress and a pearl necklace on, and I think that's supposed to be Nancy Reagan. Uh, just because she was known to wear red and, you know, that kind of looked like Nancy Reagan to me. The mouth did not. I'm not exactly sure. I thought it might have been Margaret Thatcher, perhaps. Or maybe maybe it was just a random woman. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. But l Mrs. listeners. Bush or... No, no, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, yeah. Uh, Barbara Bush. That's Barbara, for sure. Yeah. Not her. It's it, Listeners, if you have any theories, please send them our way. I uh, like to hear them. So, um, but of course, this is a the title itself is a parody of the movie uh, "Where Eagles Dare," which was a movie released in the late '60s. It had Clint Eastwood in it, and the synopsis of that movie is: Allied agents stage a daring raid on a castle where the Nazis are holding an American general prisoner. I did not. I've never has it, either one of you seen this movie. I have not. No. No, I, I, I saw the trailer last night, and it, it looks like a very violent film. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you want to see the trailer, boy, the Clint Eastwood is uh, stabbing people in the neck. I was like, boy, you can show that on a trailer? Richard Burton and Clint Eastwood. Lieutenant, drop that gun. What? Drop that gun and sit down. What the hell are you talking about? Where eagles dare. Stop that, Pinky. It's very annoying. Oh, no. Sure thing, Brain. General Brain. There's stuff in that trailer that I'm like, you couldn't get away with that like on a trailer today. But uh, he, he's just going up behind people, stabbing him in the neck, and he's it's getting all the Nazis and stuff. Um, yeah, I have to watch that movie now. Yeah, it's <laughs> it sounds like it's it, it. You know what it really felt like to me? It felt like um, uh, Indiana Jones and the Last I, Crusade. I was thinking that. Yeah. Because um, oh, I'm getting all excited now because we referenced Spielberg, but I yep. was thinking, you know, yeah, Last Crusade when Indy has to go rescue his father from the Nazis in a castle and, um, you know, shoots them all. Yes. <laughs> so this, this particular, if I caught it the second or third time, uh, watching it, that this castle is called Schloss Dankeschön, uh, <laughs> that they're going into Schloss, I believe just means, uh, 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 
country, uh, oh, it just means a kind of a big house. And then, of course, Donka Shane means thank you very much. Mm. There was that song, Donka Shane. You know, yes, I know that. Ferris Bueller and stuff, right? That's, I only know it from Ferris Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> So political, it was kind of cool to see political yeah. references this time around, uh, especially for leaders that many of which, in fact, over half of them, I think, are dead <laughs> uh, or, or or at least not publicly uh, in charge anymore. Yeah. So it was nice to see that. Uh, but what are some of your favorite moments, some of your laugh out loud moments? Because I don't know about you guys, but uh, I did find quite a few in this. There was this I believe was split into two. I think there was a commercial break in two, mm. in this one. So it's was, it was a little bit longer than Wally Lama. What did you guys like, Kelly? I liked when Pinky kept playing the drums mm-hmm. oh, and yes. <laughs> Brain kept saying, stop that, Pinky. Pinky, please stop that or I shall have to hurt you. Oops, not. <laughs> Sorry, Brain. General Brain... Then when he was giving his briefings, he'd say, you know, gentlemen or men. And Pinky would look around like, uh, there's just me sitting here. Yes. And that was kind of, the, those two things were sort of running gags throughout the episode. And, and then I liked um, when Brain was telling Pinky, you know, his cover story in case he got captured. And it was so complex. I don't <laughs> so even remember great. any of it. And uh, he's like, well, you know, can you can you repeat that back, Pinky? Or can you remember that? And he's like, no. Now, Pinky, if by any chance you're captured during this mission, remember, you are Gunther Heinrichsen from Appenzell. You move to Grindenwald to drive the cog train to Muren. Can you repeat that? Mm, no, Brain. Don't think I can. I had to. Li- I listened to it three times just so I could understand what he was just saying. <laughs> I had it on caption just so, yeah, and it was just so fun. Yes, Nathan, what did you think? Oh, I, yeah, great. Uh, general brain always the walkie talkie and he's always just right next to brain that's another running gag yes gray squirrel and bullfrog (laughs) this is gray squirrel to bullfrog and he's always right behind him or under the snow right underneath yeah exactly it seems like brain should have just aimed for the window at the beginning instead of aiming for the roof he would have saved himself a lot of trouble yes but again, but again, even when he's slipping off the off the wall, it's not. Yeah, he knows. Oh. He knows that it's. But he's like, it's not like. Oh, he doesn't say like. Oh no! But the roof is covered with ice. He says. Unfortunately, the roof is a treacherous sheet of ice. So, the vocabulary of the brain is always just mm-hmm. really fun to hear. Um, and and you're right, Kelly. His his he has dare I say delusions of grandeur <laughs> in this one. You know, I'm out of it for a little while, and everyone gets delusions of grandeur. <laughs> um, but the brain totally has these delusions in this one. He <laughs> so much the, the fact that he's seeing other. I don't know what the brain is doing, but apparently he's seeing other people in the room. <laughs> yeah. Men, hey, one's gentlemen, a, one's a genius and the other's insane. No, 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 I'm not going into that fan theory. <laughs> hey, Pinky the, and the brain. It's he, in order. One's a genius, the other's insane. Yeah. Okay, I was just saying that the the brain is definitely unstable. He is mad with power. Okay, so he's not sane. Oh uh, boy. <laughs> oh boy. But, uh, yeah. but yes, he's his delusions are out of control in this one, which are really funny. And he he cannot be called brain. Yeah, it has to be general brain. General general brain. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but very very funny. I mean, it was it. It was good. I yeah, really liked this. Lots picture. of reference. There was also uh, Al Gore's wife, right? Oh, yeah. Tipper Gore is yeah. at the end. Yeah. So t- another... Ex-wife. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, oh, they're no longer nice. married for various reasons. But uh, Tipper at the time was, was in the in the public eye quite a bit because she was the one who came up with uh, those uh, uh, little stickers and stuff they would put on the CDs saying explicit lyrics. She was one of the people that was in, in responsible for that. And so her influence is still felt to this day. <laughs> Tipper Gore. Cool. So, yeah. So blame her, kids, for your parents not letting you buy that CD. Yep. <laughs> so, I don't know. Any other thoughts on on this Pinky the Brain segment? Before Pinky we... does not like being called a rat. He He's, does not. He's very offended. He does not. So, yes. But... Rats? No, we're not rats. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, well, let's go ahead and go to our last small segment, which of course is the Wheel of Morality. And we were in for a surprise for this one because instead of a, uh, of an actual moral for this episode, the yeah they just won five thousand dollars. Yes, although in a in a in, <laughs> in a far away shot, yeah. it says they won a trip to Tahiti. <laughs> so either way, they apparently either won both. Maybe yeah. maybe it was five thousand dollars for to a trip spend, to Tahiti. Uh, yeah, on your trip to <laughs> Tahiti. So. Uh, okay, so those were our segments for today. So, before we wrap things up, it is time for our Water Tower rating. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and go over this. Let's start. Nathan, let's let's go with you, because I, I, I have a feeling that Kelly might have strong feelings about the Wally, this Wally Llama episode here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, what would you say? Well, out of five Water Towers, how many Water Towers would you give this oh, episode? Oh, boy. Um, I'm going to do four and a half, Ooh, I think. Okay. Um, it's just, it's just two classic, especially Wally Lama is a classic and any pinky in the brain, I feel like is classic because mm-hmm. they're so hilarious. Um, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and what is your favorite line from this? From this one, it was, uh, brain talking to pinky. He's giving, uh, pinky his, uh, his background story <laughs> and then ultimately asking, do you can you repeat that? <laughs> mm, no, Brain. Don't think I can. <laughs> Very awesome. Um, well, I'll go next. I'm gonna give this one four uh out of five water towers. Uh I I do like w- Wally Lama a lot. I I don't like it as as much as I should, I suppose. <laughs> but I do I do like it a lot. And I I actually totally forgot about that pinky in the brain segment i i don't know if they re- rerun it reran it that much uh as as the years went by i it was brand almost brand new to me uh mm-hmm. and uh i really loved the line your perceptions of accomplishment are misguided pinky <laughs> okay kelly it's your turn what is what is your rating for this one <laughs> I have to give it five water towers. Okay. I, I love Wally Lama. I just love it. I, I love the episode. So um, I I don't remember where rodents stare quite as much as Wally Lama. I think um, I had recorded Wally Lama and would rewatch that segment over and over again until I practically had it memorized. <laughs> so, but um, so so all the water towers are pretty much going to, to that one segment. But I liked where rodents stare as well. Yeah, it was it was uh, yeah. Both segments were awesome. And, and okay, what is your favorite line? I'm going to guess from Wally Lama. What is your favorite line? I always like the line where he says, I'm hiding from the puppy children. <laughs> and um, that whole exchange when um, right before he, he starts falling and going, Lama, 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 Lama. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so there we go. It's time for the results of last week's Twitter poll. Listeners were asked, which of these is your favorite antagonist of the hashtag Animaniacs? 5% said Timpanini. 23% said Pirate Captain Mel. 73% however went to Thaddeus Plots, the CEO of Warner Brothers. Oh, and uh, 0% went to Furman Flaxseed, so... Sorry, Vermin. Go back to your candy shop. That's the results of this week. So those were our results from the Twitter poll. So of well, those antagonists, uh, antagonists of Animaniacs, Captain Mel, Thaddeus Plots, Timpanini, and Furman of Blackseed, um, Kelly, which of your, those antagonists are your favorite? I like Is your Furman favorite. Blackseed. Furman Flaxseed. That was a fun episode. I liked it. Oh, very cool. And uh, Nathan, what about you? I went for Thaddeus Plots. I love the typewriter episode. It was, it was uh, very funny. So yeah, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Captain Mel, just because I like the songs in that. <laughs> <laughs> so good. We all had our different different characters right there. Very cool. So this week's Twitter poll 
is which of the following Warner siblings would be the most fun to spend an evening with? And we went back and forth debating whether or not we should say go on a date with or just hang out with or, or whatever. But, you know, just we'll leave it up to you guys. Which of these, which of the Warner siblings would be the most fun to have an evening with? Whether it's just go out to dinner, see a movie, whatever. Yakko, Wacko, or Dot. Go ahead and go to twitter.com slash animaniacast and make your voice heard. Woo! Okay, so coming up with feedback right now from our iTunes feed is Nathan, and he's going to share some reviews that we recently got. Oh, yeah. This is uh, Justin a couple weeks ago uh, <laughs> from the presses. Uh, <laughs> No, okay, so uh, this is from I Love Alf 88. I probably will change his name to I Love Animini Cast yeah, number one. Probably. I, I, <laughs> I would only imagine. Uh, his subject is Fun Podcast! Exclamation point. Very important. Um, I found this podcast through Twitter a few weeks ago, and I've already listened to about half the episodes, all of them soon, thinking it would be fun to rewatch. Slash be introduced to episodes of this fun cartoon along with the podcast. I need to get caught up and see if I've seen all the classic episodes. Yakko, Wacko, and Dot specifically. They're my favorite part. Slappy has grown on me, though. Good night, everybody! <laughs> Exclamation yeah. point. Good night, everybody. Yeah, it's good. And then this one is from My DVR Box. Okay. Although everything's like in alpha... Weird Greek letters. Oh. Uh, so, I don't know. They're fancy. Yeah. 100% pure genius. I've been listening to this podcast for some time now. It is absolutely amazing. Joey, Nathan, and Kelly are hilarious. All caps. Wow. To listen to. Plus, they're reviewing one of, if not, the greatest animated series of all time. Animaniacs! Exclamation point. Also, I really want those decals, but that's not important. What is important is that you listen to the Animaniacast, and I hope all you listening out there right now do listen to the Animaniacast. Yeah. Because otherwise... Why you listen? Why you have this on? That's weird. <laughs> very cool. So thank you very much. And yes, go on out to uh, iTunes, and you can share yours, and we'll read them on air. As long as as long as they're nice, we'll read them on air. Yeah. I've, Which luckily I've, we haven't got any mean ones yet. So they're <laughs> yeah. But if you leave a mean one, don't think we're going to read it. Just yeah, you're wasting your breath uh, or your uh, fingers on the typewriter. Anyway. <laughs> I like how I still call it a typewriter instead of a keyboard, by the way. No, that's right. You guys use that typewriter for <laughs> iTunes reviews? People don't use keyboards either, though, Joey. It's all on phones and tablets. Oh, that's true. Whatever, Nathan. Okay, so uh, also don't forget you can uh, share. If you have a, a Yakko you, uh, a Yakko doll or a Yakko picture or anything like that, you can always put that on Twitter. Uh, put it hashtag Yakko's world and we'll retweet it. And uh, also, if I've had some people online talk to me and say, hey, you know, I really liked that particular episode you just reviewed, and this is what I liked about it, and yeah, you know, this and that. Hey, and I, please, folks, if you uh, happen to have any additional thoughts on any episodes that we've reviewed, even in, you know, ones in the past, uh, please send them in to us. Uh, you know, send us an MP3 or just uh, write us a, an email. And uh, we'll, you know, we might just share those out to everybody out there. Mm -hmm. If you send an email, just make sure you keep it, you know, short and concise, which I know is hard for us to do. But uh, <laughs> if you keep it within a minute or two, uh, it has a much higher chance of uh, getting on the air right here. So with that, I think that's about it. But I'll share real quick. I think we should share contact information one more time. Okay. Uh, Nathan, what about you? Django FT. I don't think anyone would ever forget it. No. So, yeah. I know Django your followers have been going me. out of the, you yeah. know, like crazy. Um, Animaniacast started following me again, so that's oh, good. Oh, that's good. I lost them for a little bit. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> they lost you. That's too bad. Um, but I got them back, so good. that's good. Good. That's good. And Kelly, what about you? I'm on Twitter, Yoda Princess, Y-O-D-A-P-R-N-C-S-S, -S, or you can email me, Kelly, K-E-L-O-Y, at BigShinyRobot.com. Very cool. And uh, if for some reason you want to say hi to me, it's Joey in Tucson. And, of course, I'm always up on the Animaniacast Twitter feed uh, favoriting any tweets that have the word Animaniacs in them. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, so with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Joey and for Nathan and Kelly. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. (laughs) Anyway, thanks. That's it. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds of the Animaniacs characters or any other Animaniacs related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Warner Brothers, Amblin Entertainment, or their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacast unless otherwise indicated.